all right students uh, for this time uh, we are going to discuss about uh, different structures of sentences when we are writing something when we speak something so we do have different types of sentences in our speech and in our writing as well and uh, on the basis of uh, usage and on the basis of different structuring we categorize these types of sentences similarly in the very same uh, session we are also going to discuss the subject verb agreement means what is the relation between a subject and the used verb in that sentence so here we go uh, first of all what is a sentence when we you know uh, think about what is a sentence it comes about an idea which has you know a complete thought in it and which always possesses a full stop in it a sentence is a group of words that is used to say something to ask something or to tell somebody to do something obviously in a complete way we cannot say the old men it would be a sentence because it is not conveying something or it is not conveying a proper thought to someone the old men sigh now it is a complete thought have we got any change however it is a question but it could it also be called as a sentence because it is used to ask something to someone a sentence should give enough information to the person hearing it or reading it reading to or to sorry to for <clears throat> them or to form a complete idea in their mind of the message that is being communicated to them another thing about a sentence is that a sentence should begin with a capital letter and end with either a full stop a question mark or an exclamation mark means if a if the combination of the words either ending on a full stop or a question mark or even an exclamation mark can be termed as sentence however there are few words which are in, in which are themselves end up uh, in a an exclamation mark but they won't be called as the sentence likewise wow or uh, there are the words which may be end uh, by an exclamation mark but wouldn't be termed as a sentence okay uh, moving ahead a sentence is a group of words that is used to make a statement to ask a question or to give an order or make a request let's suppose when we talk about the uh, group of words we have previously discussed that the group of words may be uh, termed as a phrase or may be termed as a dependent clause but when we talk about independent clause and the group of the words they then only the combination of the words would be called as a sentence there are different types of sentences on the basis of the usage uh, the brackets are wrongly placed so we pardon for this types of the sentences on the basis of usage when we talk about you know usage uh likewise in what manner we are using a particular sentence what is the intention of the speaker and what is the intention of the writer means is he going to tell some information is he asking something to someone is he uh, uh is the or does he want to you know show his strong emotion towards something so on the basis of these types of usages we differentiate among different sentences and on that basis we form different types of sentences other than this there are also different types of sentences on the basis of its structure which we will be going to discuss in the next session now the first one is the declarative sentences here uh, i have just skipped one sentence which was written in the previous slide that the piece, uh, the sentence is a type of sentences on the basis of usages are of four first one is declarative declare meant when we makes a statement when we declare something when we want to say something in order to you know inform someone right 
uh, examples are given here the that isn't the way to do means i am saying someone i am uh, telling someone that that you, whatever you are opting the way is not the way to do another uh, statement is my father my father doesn't like chocolate my father doesn't like chocolate means i'm giving information about my father to someone and i am actually declaring something i am explaining something i am giving information about something the same same case uh, is with the third one these shoes are too tired this is probably i am informing about you know the size of the shoes to the uh, shopkeeper or you know to the barber or sorry to the um, uh, customer or to you know my uh, father or mother or anybody else so let's suppose if i'm saying that the session is going to be uh, a bit lengthy so it's another declarative sentence so when we declare something we form declarative sentences and how actually we form declarative sentences declarative sentences are formed in a simple way subject verb and object but not necessarily all the affirmative sentences are called declarative sentences declarative sentences may be negative may be uh intro negative not not intro negative but uh, affirmative and negative in negative sentences we also negate something in order to give the information about something the first example is a negative sentence that isn't is not the way to do so when we you know uh, negate something it's itself a uh, uh you know an explanation about something or an information about something so it would it would also be called as a declarative sentence interrogative sentence uh, what about the interrogative sentence interrogative sentence when we interrogate something I mean we want to ask something or they are you know called questions also and uh, interrogative sentences are of two types uh, the examples which are given here are starting from uh, auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs or the helping verbs but uh, <clears throat> in other cases we also use interrogative sentences by using wh words so both could would be called as interrogative sentences let's suppose am i too late this is an interrogative sentence having an helping verb here right starting with helping verb similarly would you like a cup of coffee this is a modal auxiliary so modal auxiliaries or you know the helping verb and the wh words all the three possible words or the comb or the categories of the word could be used to make interrogative sentences let's suppose what are you doing and uh, uh, what are your other plans and where do you want to live in the next year so the, these are the question comprised on wh words and these are also the interrogative sentences now the imperative sentences imperative sentences means when you, you know when you give some order some some command and you know request and uh, you know when you are uh, suggesting something to do and when you are uh, uh, you you say that uh, mm, you know when you command order request suggest and uh, make some many get suggestion in a way that it would be a better solution for them so come back come back is another could be a command or if if the sentence would be like that please come back so it would also be an imperative sentence having a request kind of tone you sit over there jack you sit over there jack i am commanding jack to sit over there so it's another imperative sentence in most of the cases imperative sentences imperative sentences do not possess the subject in it means addressee of the action 
would not be mentioned in the sentence means to do this or to do that we are ordering we are commanding something to do and that is why uh, we don't uh, uh, usually in usual cases we don't use subject because the subject is already understood because we point out someone and then say something besides this uh, the uh, it is actually the imperative sentences are used to uh, give the command or order to uh, to the definite uh, people or to the definite uh, addressee of our sayings let's suppose the rules on the walls of uh, the hospitals written in imperative sentences rules um, rules and regulation mentioned on any particular area let's suppose shopping center or hospitals or library or uh, you can say that schools institutions offices and railway stations there are few uh, yeah, there are some rules mentioned you know on the walls uh, written in imperative sentences in a way that do not do this do this do do this and don't do this so these are the uh, you know uh, different rules which are mentioned in different places are written in imperative because they don't mention whom they are addressing obviously all the passerbys all the people who are visiting that place the orders are for them so there is no need to mention the subject in imperative sentences okay moving ahead exclamatory sentences is another type of the sentences which are used in different way of you uh, in in different way in a speaking or in writing that express opinions or feelings with force or strong emotions like exclamation let's suppose if we have the strong feeling about something and we are you know saying it in in uh, in you know in a passionate way in an aggressive way means our emotions are subdued so uh, sorry um, our emotions are you know our words words are you know just the way to communicate our emotions then only we use exclamatory sentences let's suppose how i uh, sorry how this is the wrong sentence here um, how i hit maths uh, it this could be the uh, right sentence or how i hate maths oh, probably e is missing here how i hate maths or how i hate maths both are correct so i'm just is it telling my you know feelings or hatred about my about mathematics and another sentence is what pretty shoes so this is also an exclamatory sentence you three boys this is also the exclamatory sentence showing my you know emotions about uh, some boys okay another way means some grammarians recognize a fifth sentence type you know when you uh, search about different types of sentences you you may encounter with a with uh, another type of sentence which is not mentioned uh, among the four uh, that they are the optative sentences optative sentences are the sentences which are used to express wishes god save the coin peace be upon him may you live long these are the you know the sentences which express you know prayers wishes and when you wish something so these are also called uh, one of the type of optative by some grammarian however um, most grammarian says that oh there are only four types of uh, sentences okay uh, now here we go uh, the basic elements of a sentence means on what uh, way a sentence uh, or on or what are the main components of a sentence there must be a subject and there must be at least a verb in a sentence we know it well because we have studied it in clauses or you know <clears throat> independent clauses now subject the word or the group of words that names the person or thing being talked about in the sentence obviously the receiver or you know you know sorry not receiver the doer of the action subject means the person who the person who does the action in the sentence is is termed as the subject 
and uh, uh, not exactly the, um, uh, the 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 doer of the action but uh, if the sentence is like having the information about the subject like she is a girl she is a subject here we can say that uh, it is telling some information about the subject right so the person th the thing we're being talked about so we are actually talking about she so she is the subject here and now what is the predicate uh, the part other than the subject is termed as predicate is this clear the subject uh, when we remove the subject the remaining part the whole remaining part whether it is consisting of multiple words or few words would be termed as predicate everything that is not a part of the subject of the sentence would be called as a predicate now the predicate actually there's a heading written uh, uh in the top predicate now the pre predicate could have you know verb direct object indirect object or complement you know it depends on different structures of the sentence now the word or the group of words that say something about what the subject of the sentence is doing and what is happening to the subject of the sentence obviously like you know uh, the main verb um, she uh, wants to eat chocolate so she wants wants as a verb here similarly uh, they walk they walk slowly so walk is the verb here and uh, uh, it could be like uh, like as uh, like uh, um, she uh, sorry my mother is a teacher so is is also a verb which is telling us some information about uh, which helps us to link with the subject that what is happening to that subject and what is you know the link of that subject with the verb that is why in some cases the uh, state verbs or the possessive verb are called as the linking verbs because they link the subject with that object it means we cannot say that my mother doctor my mother is a doctor so the is is linking with uh, subject with that of the object okay in some sentences there could be the direct objects and in some cases there could be indirect objects so what is the direct object direct object is the person or the thing that is most directly affected by the action or a state described by the verb for example, what the subject of the sentence has or gets or does something or does something with. with. This is the important thing, something with. So does something with and does something to or gets something, you know, there's a strong link of word with that of the object. I saw him. Who actually I, I uh, who did I see? him so this is him is the direct object she was holding a large car carving knife now what was she holding a large carving knife so this is the mm, direct object now what is the indirect object the group or the word sorry the word or the word group that describes the person or thing that direct object is given to or done for means let's suppose uh she lent her bicycle she lent the men her bicycle here the direct object is her bicycle but indirect object is the man means not exactly uh the uh, the the man is written here in before the her bicycle but it is not the direct object let's suppose uh if we removed her bicycle here and we say that she lent the man however this this is not the uh, actual meaning of the sentence or meaning are we actually intended to say that she lent her bicycle and to whom the man this is the indirect object which does not receive the action directly the tooth fairy takes your tooth and leaves you three dollar leaves you means the action is not happening direct to you but it actually directly happens to your tooth and then the other action happens which happens to you loud music gives a headache and whom actually me so loud music gives me a headache now he me is a indirect object okay what is the complement a word or the group of words that says something about the subject or object of a sentence uh let's like 
the trees were bare now this is not the you know uh, the object means the receiver of the action but it is telling the quality of something so how were the trees now the trees were bare so bare is a compliment here shela become became a teacher so a teacher is an as a compliment here similarly when we say that she plays in the garden now in the garden is the phrase but wouldn't be called as the object it may be termed as complement and which type of complement is this that it is that it is the prepositional phrase okay and sometimes we do use uh, adverbial phrases also um, or adver adverbial phrase instead of or adverbs instead of the object a word or group of words that provides information about when why and how or something else the action or state described in a sentence takes space and that's make some comment about what is said in the rest of the sentence likewise <clears throat> come quickly so quickly is an adverb here it's not a complement it's not uh, the direct object or indirect object but it's an adverb so we also form such type of sentences in which only uh, the verb has an adverb tell me honestly what you think and uh, tell me honestly is also a complete sentence honestly is an adverb here and what you think is actually another phrase which we have mentioned here to complete the meaning to uh, to give the appropriate meaning to the sentence right so here is another example okay now come to words the subject verb agreement this is another important thing to be focused on uh, when we are making sentences we some sometimes form the sentences which does not agree with each other that means the subject does not agree with the verb let's suppose the she instead of using like she goes we say that she go to market so it would be wrong now the form of the subject does not agree uh, with the form of the verb here so subject and verb must agree with one another in number means whether the uh, one 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 is plural so the other one should be plural thus if a subject is singular its verb must be singular if a subject is plural its verb must also be plural uh yes one more thing is that you may get confused that in classes uh, to you know make you more clear i do say ki bhai this is dog is mm, singular here and you need to add s and es and this is how we form uh we pluralize the verb however this is not the case in a language because i am addressing the official channel our official session so i'm telling you here that the nouns and the verbs forms plural in opposite ways let's suppose if the word chase is written c h a s e and it does not have s along with uh, the verb so it would be termed as plural so the actually the uh, verb x in a opposite way ऑपोजिट वे अगर अगर एस ओ ई एस वर्ब में है तो वो सिंगुलर होगा और एस ओ ई एस नहीं है तो इट वुड बी कॉल्ड एज सिंगुलर सॉरी प्लूरल अगर एस ओ ई है तो फिर प्लूरल सॉरी सिंगुलर और अगर एस ओ ई एस नहीं है तो फिर वो प्लूरल कहलाएगा इन ऑपोजिट वे जस्ट लाइक वी डू विद नाउन द डॉग चेस इज द कैट the dog is singular so we need to singularize the sub uh, verb chases the cat the dogs if the plural is the subject so we need to pluralize the subject means by removing s in it a phrase or clause between subject and the verb does not change the number of the subject likewise uh let's suppose if we have included a phrase or the clause in between the subject and the verb it does not mean that the sub that the verb could be changed according to you know that phrase no but the main focus should be on the main subject the main subject forms the main verbs a can of lima beans sits on the shelf let's suppose a can could could be a can could be you know uh, a lima beans and now beans is the plural here so we should not right in a way that a can of lima beans sit on the floor it would be wrong because this sits link with the can 
तो कैन से चंद्र शेल्फ अब वी आर जस्ट इलेब्रेटिंग दैट व्हाट द कैन इज ओह सॉरी यस व्हाट आर देयर इन द कैन Uh, the verb sits agrees with the verb with the subject can not with beans okay the women the women this is the plural obviously women e is here uh, who went to the meeting were bored ab who went to the meeting however the meeting is singular but we need to pluralize the or you know singularize the verb sorry pluralize the verb because the subject is plural the women the women women is plural so we need to plural make the plural form of the verb indefinite plural pr pronouns there is an there is a confusion about you know when we use these types of words like when we use singular kind of indefinite indefinite pronouns what are the indefinite pronouns in which we not specifying a particular person or you know a particular a particular noun indefinite pronouns means irrespective of particular person we are not naming per particular thing so each either neither no no one nobody nothing anyone anybody anything someone somebody something everyone everybody everything so these types of singular do have the singular sorry uh, when we use the singular subject they are called as a singular subject so we use the singular verb which is called as does each does a great deal of work similarly one who one who does this would be called uh, a shining star so e, uh, these are the singular uh, indefinite pronouns now the plural several both few many both do a great deal of work we, we won't say that both does a great deal of work because they are the plural so we used to use the plural form of the verb singular or plural sometimes there are some indefinite pronouns which could be which which, which could be uh, used as you know singular indefinite pronoun or the plural pro uh, uh, indefinite pronoun likewise some take the example of some some of the sugar is on the floor some of the marbles are on the floor why is it so because when we are using uncountable we use singular and with countable use plural sugar is uncountable so we assume that sugar is singular so we use singular subject similarly uh, the marbles are countable so we assume that marbles are plural so we use the plural form of verb acha let's suppose if the subjects are compound means having two uh, subjects at a time a pencil and an eraser make so plural verb we use with compound subjects joined by or not like let's suppose uh, or ya phir not dono mein se koi bhi neither the director nor the actors are following the lines now neither the actors nor the director is following the line so what is the criteria to make such type of sentences if the nearer subject of the verb has the plural form of the verbs like actors we use plural form of the verb similarly if the nearer uh, one uh, the nearer subject or in the compound subject having the nearer one in the singular form we use the singulars director with is actors are right in what its subject must agree with like guys waiter there is a fly let's suppose if uh, we are you know there is a fly ab now is is referring to fly so we know that we are talking about one fly it would be if it it would like like there are few flies in my soup so there are now our are agrees uh, agrees sorry are should be agrees with flies right not with there and that demonstrative जब हम प्रोनाउंस इस्तेमाल करते हैं तो वी डोंटन फोकस ऑन यू नो दब्जेक्ट देर आर फोर फ्लाइज यस देर आर फोर फ्लाइज यस सिमिलर ओके नाउ द कलेक्टिव नाउन ग्रोप यानी कि इफ वी हैव यू नो फॉर्म वी आर यूजिंग कलेक्टिव प्रोना सॉरी नाउन इन द सब्जेक्ट 
as a, as a subject like mm, group hair, jewelry, crowd, team, and uh, you know, uh, we can also that uh, mm, classroom and uh, members. So, when the, likewise, uh, members of the group. So, th this is actually uh, could, could form the different uh, form of the subject. The jury now, however, jury is uh, the per you can say that is something having different kinds of members in it. So, but it's a collective noun. Similarly, the bouquet the bouquet could have you know multiple flowers in it, but we name it as one component. The now the jury is one component here. So, if we are using collective noun in the sentences, we assume it a singular subject. So, the jury has awarded custody to the grandmother. Similarly, the next sentence is, the jury members have been arguing for five days. Now, we are not focusing on jury here, but we are more focused on members. We are talking about the members of the jury. So, the jury members have been, uh, we have changed the verb here into the plural form yes titles of single entities let's suppose if the title of any book any organization any country or any you know uh, recipe or any um, story or anything else or the drama is in itself a plural form it is in itself a plural form of something then uh then also we you we, we take it as as a singular entity the grapes of wrath the grapes of wrath however the grapes is a plural form of grapes sorry but now the, we are taking it as the title of something so the grapes of wrath takes now the singular subject is used similarly let's suppose uh the se the book seven wonders of the world is a marvelous writing is a marvelous does not because we are referring to a particular book one book plural form of this uh, subject let's suppose the particular word uh, uh, of anything is itself a plural means we don't we cannot say it in the singular form it does not have any you know form which which may be taken as the singular away so it would be definitely called as the single which which would be definitely be taken as the singular form of the subject because you know uh, it is the s in the end of that word s is itself a uh, uh, you know the part of the spelling mumps is a contagious disease so mumps is a is a name of the disease which itself has a s in it so would be termed as you know uh, which would be considered as a singular subject so politics is an interesting subject politics is the is a title of you know a subject having s in it as its form now the, the politics of the situation were complicated now we are talking about something you know the here the politics of the situation we are talking about you know different strategy which the people are taking to uh, you know use the politics in different ways so here the politics is used in uh, plural form with the with the one or one of those hana is one of those who like to read comic books uh, hannah is one of those now consider the one of those now the, the one of those means there are still some other people who like to read comic books so this is how hannah is one of them who like to read who likes me when we are taking take, we are when we talk about only hannah then only then only it would be termed as you know the sub singular subject now hannah is one of those means one of among uh, sorry among those people she is one of them who like to read so like should be uh, written in plural the verb should be written in plural let's suppose hannah is the only one of those people who likes to read comic book. Now we have specified Hannah in a singular way. Means we have specified Hannah in a different way that no other person likes to read uh, re uh, comic books. So here we need to use singular verb.
yes the last one uh probably it's the last one that to a or the number if we are using a number of like a number of people grow tomato each summer a number of people means there are several people who grow tomatoes each summer a number of people is referring you know or you the quantity of the people that there are you know so many people who grow tomatoes each summer now when we are talking about the number of volunteers grows each other uh, sorry each year now the numbers of volunteers pe what is actually the focus of the speaker is that the digit means you know the calculation the uh, sorry statistical value of the volunteers grew each grow each other so the number of volunteers grows each other this is how we can use you know different forms of sentences by using different forms of subject so each subject do have a different types of <clears throat> subject in it and a different types of verb in it and the form of the verb whether it is telling us a particular dia um, action we assume that they must refer with they must agree with the subject used in that sentence the action remains the same but the form may be altered according to that scenario okay here we have done so you need to when you are, you are using uh, such type of text um, or any types of text do focus on these types of things when you are reading something Thank you.